32-bit float is being weaponized as a marketing scam. In this video, I want to expose the truth, show you what to look out for so you don't get stung, and then I want to call out the biggest offenders. That's right, there are portable recorders and lav mic systems that claim to be 32-bit float, but are they actually? Which ones can we trust? Don't waste the cash. Watch this first. I want to thank someone who commented on my channel, Oz Peter, uh, for bringing this to my attention. I saw the comment, I, th I read it, I thought, that is interesting. And then I dug a little deeper and, oh dear God, this is everywhere. It's time to talk about it. We should briefly talk about what 32-bit float actually means for some context. True 32-bit float has a theoretical dynamic range of 1500 decibels. And it does this by using two analog to digital converters per channel. The two analog to digital converters, or we'll call them ADCs from now on, record at two different gain levels. And then these signals are combined to produce a very large dynamic range. And we're talking real world dynamic range of 140 to 160 decibels. By doing this, the idea is that it can prevent clipping in real world situations. So really to get true 32-bit float, two ADCs are essential. And here's the crux. Some units only have one ADC, which record at around 110 to 120 decibels of dynamic range. And then once it's recorded, the file is repackaged as a 32-bit float file. And you know, this offers absolutely no more real-world headroom. Clipped audio at the analog stage stays clipped in post. Just to give these single ADC 32-bit float files their due credit, in editing, you might get files that are slightly more robust. The, you know, you may be able to process a little heavier if you want to, but it doesn't fix bad gain staging. Why is this a problem? Well, the marketing blurs the lines between the file format and the hardware capabilities. Buyers assume that 32-bit float means never clips. But of course, with single ADC units, that's not the case. And they, they do have to worry about gain staging. And at the end of the day, this could put people's projects at risk. I want to show you a list now of all the products that have dual ADCs, and I would recommend buying any of them, and then ones that definitely have either just one confirmed or ones that don't specify on their websites and I've been in touch with the companies and they haven't got back to me. So I have a mix of field recorders, portable recorders and lav mics and first up, confirmed dual ADCs is the Tascam DR10L Pro, which is actually still my favorite lav mic system. The same goes for Tascam's Stellar Porta Capture X6 and X8, the latter of which I own and have reviewed, confirmed dual ADCs. It also won't be a surprise to you that the Sound Devices Mix Pre series all have dual ADCs. They're a bit more pricey, but definitely get a solid recommendation. Deity's PR2 recorder also confirmed dual ADCs. There is a little bit of confusion around this because in mono mode it uses the two ADCs for true 32-bit float but in stereo mode clearly it splits the two ADCs and uses one per channel so stereo not 32-bit float but it's well documented I got in touch with Hollyland about their new as of the time of filming Lark Max 2 and good news confirmed dual ADCs also good news from Zoom their H6 Essential H6 Studio H4 Essential, H1 Essential, and H1 XLR all confirmed dual ADCs. And then one ADC either confirmed or I've not heard back from the companies and it doesn't say so on their websites. Both of the Tascam DR5XP and DR7XP, which I reviewed recently. The DJI Mic 2, no confirmation of dual ADCs. I emailed them, here it is, didn't hear back. Of course, you'll be wondering about the Mic 3, which was released during the making of this video. I had high hopes, but even then, looking at the specs, there isn't explicit mention of dual ADCs. Although the specs do boast about having single files or dual files, to me, that's not necessarily indicative of dual ADCs. So this one, I don't know. Take it with a pinch of salt, but an AI search suggests that it's inconclusive. The Rode Wireless Pro, shock horror. No confirmation of dual ADCs. I got in touch, of course I did. Didn't hear back. And whilst I was at it, I got in touch with Zoom to query their H2E, H4N and H4N Pro. Do you think I heard back? Okay, how do we spot it? Now the obvious one is you look for explicit mention of dual ADCs on products, websites. You know, I feel like manufacturers need to be better at this. They need to be um, kind of transparent with the specs of their products. I'd say some other red flags are 
mentions of 32-bit float, but then the dynamic range figures of the unit look kind of suspiciously low, maybe kind of lower than 120, because, you know, you'd think that it would be significantly higher than that if they had two ADCs. Anyway, that's it for now. I've loved making this for you. I hope this was enlightening. Uh, do consider subscribing. Um, this video here, I highly recommend watching next. You will love it, I guarantee. I'll see you next time.